Hey, welcome back. Uh, this weekend, I was, I didn't get hurt. That's a good thing. Um, still dealing with this. Uh, this week, okay. So I was watching this um, YouTube video this weekend about somebody using Chat GP, uh, Chat GPT to generate prompts for Mid Journey, and it basically set up this this um formula, I guess you would call it a Mid Journey formula, where it would have the subject, and then it would have descriptors of the subject, then it would pick a camera, and then it would pick lenses and um, it may have done descriptors of the photography style, maybe an artist. I don't know. And I was thinking, I was like, that's cool. I like that. I, okay, whatever. But then I was like thinking about it. I was like, what it's really doing is kind of making a, it's randomizing things. It's kind of throwing a bunch of stuff into the stew and, um, you're not really getting control over it. It's, it's, um, you know, grabbing a camera here, lens there, throwing descriptors at. I don't know what those descriptors are based on. It's just random descriptors. So you're creating cool images, but it's really just like lightning in a bottle. Like it's completely random. I was thinking about it. I do these things. I think a little. And I think we can do better. All right, let's look at my process. Here we go. Uh, all right, so here's my idea. Just clamped. Jesus, I'm going to destroy this thumb. Anyway, this is my idea for using ChatGPT with MidJourney in a different sort of way. I like to get to the essence of art styles. That's kind of what this whole channel is about. And I like to get down to the details and nitty gritty, the technical aspects of it. And I was like, I was thinking that. Like, I don't want something that just randomly spits out something that I put into another program and and then I hope for the best. Like, I want to have control over this. I want to have as much control as possible over these generations. So what I was thinking was, why don't I reverse think this whole thing and see what chat GPT can dissect? Uh, and let's, let's just go through this. So um, what I did is I put into ChatGPT, you can see over here, uh, give me five technical, and I'm using Norman Rothwell because I used it in the previous video about Describe, and everyone kind of has, it. it's a good base because everyone understands what Norman Rothwell is, Midjourney understands what it is, that's why I'm using it. Um, so I said to ChatGPT, I said, give me five technical descriptors of Rothwell paintings, detailed brushwork, Luminous color palette, masterful composition, realistic lighting and shadows, very textured effects. I read through that and I'm like, yeah, that's right. Perfect. That's those are five five defining characteristics of technical aspects of Norman Rockwell. And I, I ran that with with Mid Journey. I was like, hey. it wasn't exactly what I was thinking. The idea in the beginning was to generate a style. Like, can I describe? A painting a painter enough that I can get their style without using their name and I, I, it was just like an exercise I wanted to do but it kind of went down this road of like really creating controllability so the next thing I asked for were oh let me get my clicker now give me five descriptors of Norman Rockwell paintings uh, subject of Norman Rockwell paintings and I realized I spelt Norman wrong and it's Norma Rockwell here. Still understood what I was talking about. Thank God. You know, thank you. <laughs> anyway, so uh, I wanted five subject um, descriptors of Norma Rock. American life, small town settings, family and community, social commentary, holiday celebrations. Sounds perfect. That's that's what you saw on, on Saturday evening post. Those are absolutely, you know, subject matter that he delves into. Next step was I told ChatGPT uh, for my just ease of use, uh, put those last two lists in a single line, comma separated thing. So single line, comma separated, easy to copy and paste. All right, on to the next step. All right, so what I did was I took our basic testing, uh, you know, our real simple testing prompts. A woman, a cheeseburger, blah, 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 blah. 
in the style. Oh, I don't think I even put in in the style. I I just use those uh those eight subjects and copy and pasted my ten descriptors onto the back of that. It was like a woman, comma separated, ten descriptors in sixteen by nine, and this is what we got. Here is a cheeseburger. I see where it's going. It's not. Um, I mean, it's illustrative and and punchy colors and things like that not exactly what we think of with norman rockwell but i do see an older car so cheeseburger well that's always a difficult one and that's why i keep it in in the prompts because we see how far we get but pretty good i'm not saying horrible uh this is in the forest absolutely i see it it's um you know blacks are raised a little bit the the uh, has a feeling of community and you know the subject matter is right it's rural america right where i would think rockwell would put this you know it's a little bit more modern so but we're working with a very simple prompt like this i mean i guess it could be i don't know what's cluing me that this is more of a modern times but i think it's a beautiful picture uh here we go um another this is a house yeah that could absolutely be rockwell i mean it's illustrative, it's good brushwork, it's dramatic lighting, it's a use of light and shadows. Sure, come on. Uh, perfect. Um, this could fall under the social commentary. This could, um, you know, he loves, uh, he a lot of his stuff is autumn. It's New England, it's autumn. Um, probably why I like Rockwell so much. Old brushwork, illumination, light and shadow. I mean, look at this dramatic lighting over here. Um, absolutely has characteristics is that like a hockey mask in that front of that car is that like jason's car <laughs> um so very cool very on the no so it's not it's not like exactly norman rockwell but it's taking the characteristics of him and putting it in this other thing and that's why i really like it it's it's you know you're given a prompt that you can go back and dissect and i hate to keep banging on describe but describe is such a black box when when you do something like this, I can go back to this prompt and tweak it and move things around and, you know, take out the holiday celebrations if that's putting too much into it. Um, so let's let's uh, let's keep going. Absolutely. Right. I mean, that's, you know, rural America, Americana painting, you know, and motorcycle at the burger shop or donut shop, um, you know, absolutely just little slices of regular non-celebrity light is uh you know what we look with uh look for with rockwell there is something weird with the perspective of this pole and this bike it's giving me like an escher feel i oh the wheels on the other side of both shocks that's weird that's messing with my head yeah an octopus another difficult one we got an octopus tending bar i mean there could be social commentary on how hard uh, uh, bartenders work and they need to have eight arms to, to serve everyone. But, uh, definitely seeing the style, seeing the vibe, seeing the illustration, illustrative work come through. I love this one. I love this one so much. Um, I wish mid journey was tightening up their, their, um, you know, you're getting this noise and this, this cellular pattern up in the trees and, I find if you do the upscale, like the four time upscale, it does clean that stuff up somewhat. But uh, wow, this is this is beautiful. I really like this. This is a uh, you know slice of life, rural America, Rockwell. You know, not the happiest scene because things are dilapidated a little bit, run down a little bit. But this is real life. I mean, geez, uh, I live up in New England. This could be. Any Boston suburb, not any, is I shouldn't say any, but <laughs> um, because there are some expensive ones that are not run down. Uh, but this could be, uh, you know, a, a, a slice of, uh, you know, New England during the winter and you kind of have that wet, wet, gross feeling. It's not a pretty winter, but it's not. There's a lot of complexity with the debris and the the raggedness of the house you know sometimes when you just draw a house if you draw it perfect and pristine it's too simple 
this has character to it. I really like it. And uh, I think that's a beautiful image. Uh, and here's a woman. Again, slice of life. It's That's what Rockwell liked. Um, and I think this this little experiment, like, you know, you could really take this prompt somewhere and, and start manipulating those descriptors that you threw in. You could probably have, you could have ChatGPT make you more and more descriptors. And, uh, you know, you could interchange them. I mean, what do I see here? I see, what is she doing? She, at first I was thinking she was on a bus, but now I'm thinking she's, she's in like a loungy restaurant, reading a book and things are going on outside. And it's, you know, nothing spectacular, but it's, it's presenting the, the, the mundane in a spectacular way. So very cool. Oh, is that the last one? That's the last one. Okay, so uh, I want to go back to this one right here. It was a little bit more complicated. I wanted to take those descriptors and and fill out the uh, the prompt a bit. So I said a family decorating a Christmas tree. Uh, I, I'm going to have to type out the prompt, but it was I wanted to fill it out a little bit because I knew there were ten descriptors. I wanted to see that those ten descriptors really held control of the prompt, and they did. You know, the longer you make your your the front of your prompt, you know, the less weight your back you bring. The more you put into the prompt, the less things get picked up. This held together beautifully. It was just a more complicated prompt to test out what was going on. Definitely, I would, and that's absolutely a Rockwellian style illustration. I mean, he loved that stuff. I love these people in the windows too. So cool, like they're watching. The family decorate the Christmas tree outside. Awesome. Next step. All right. And here was the next step. I wanted to, okay, it got Rockwell. That's cool. It gave me a lot to work with, a lot to play with, a lot to tweak and tool to my own desires. So the next step was, hey, let's go back to ChatGPT and see if it works with another artist. And I put in one single prompt. I said, can you do the same thing for Tim Burton? And it said, sure, here's a combined list of technical and subjective subject descriptors for Tim Burton's work. Gothic aesthetics, surreal imagery, dark color palettes, distinctive character design, whimsical elements, fantastical themes, quirky misunderstood characters, exploration of outsider perspectives, dark humor, visually striking contrast. All right, so let's see how that did. I mean, it was really sim uh, I mean, it was so simple to just swap this out. Cheeseburger in the style. Now, I wouldn't say this is exactly Tim Burton, but this gives the vibe of the gothic, heavy, dark, outsider, you know, obviously this is a cheeseburger house. It's weird. It's whimsical. It's just, it does have vibes of Burton, but it has more vibes of his overall what would you say? Um, and not aesthetic, but but mood and and um, uh, overall just feel. It's it's kind of a abstract thing I'm looking at here. I mean, I would think a bit Burton Burger House would be a little bit more gothic. He really likes the gothic, and but uh, and this looks a little bit more. Um, this gives me the feel of uh, Natural Park, uh, Grand. Grand Lodges. That's the the uh, architecture I'm thinking of. Gives me the feeling of Grand Lodge, um, not uh, which is where Tim Burton's more Victorian when you get into his architecture, um, Victorian Gothic. So there's a very so cool though. I mean, look at that. Definitely Tim Burton here. You know, you got these. Uh, you know, the shapes of these limbs, um, the pattern of them all going upward in the same direction, but but also having these bends to them, absolutely silhouetted character uh, arriving at this this cemetery, looks like, cemetery gates type thing. Um, Tim Burton is really big with the, um, uh, what would you call it? It's a, the arrival, the, what is the word I'm thinking? The establishing scene. Oh my gosh. So he's really big on those. I see it in Sleepy Hollow and, and um, uh, obviously Wednesday and Edward Scissorhands. Like it really sets the the universe that he's creating. Definitely Tim Burton. I mean, there you go. You got the arched roofs, the, you know, Victorian, you know, kind of 
haphazard house that's put together. It's whimsical, but dark. And, uh, you know, that's totally him. We got a moat going around the house. It's hitting all the notes and a full moon outside. And bats, bats flying around. Absolutely would put that in a category for Timmy. This guy, definitely. Look at that dark, moody, sol- sullen eyes. And, you know, but he, you also get this feel like, oh, okay, there's something bigger in the world that he wants to explore and needs to go on his journey. Um, but absolutely, and and the the grotesque uh, proportions of the face and uh, features is is uh, right up Burton's alley. Motorcycle, yeah, okay. I I think the color palette says um, Tim Burton. I think yeah, it also has a a feel of a steampunk, which you can get from Sleepy Hollow. You know, you got that aesthetic built in there. So and there's a little rust. That's interesting. But yeah, I can, I, I'd buy that. The octopus, I mean, those are Tim Burton eyes. If, if you watch the end of the Wednesday series, you know which eyes. Or uh, that's Large Marge right there. Coffee break. But there's the octopus. Absolutely has that, you know, he loves using those eyes that um, are, are um, protruding from the sockets. You know, those, those, there's no lids holding them in and it's unsettling, but, uh, very cool. I like that. I think that's definitely a win. Um, here's a tree. Yeah. I mean, I get it. He, he, he's into those swirls too. You know, you'll see that in Nightmare Before Christmas, things like that. But I think it's, I guess what we really need to be talking about is this chat GPT to, to mid journey, uh, process and, I think it's it's working. It's it's hitting it, and and it's giving us a variety. Not, you know, we're not dialing like right down on a Tim Burton. Say make this in the style of Tim Burton. We're like, put this in the world that kind of leans towards Tim Burton, and uh, I like it. I I I think this is a process that I will absolutely use, time and again. Woman, yes, yes, hundred percent, yes. You know, elongated neck. Uh, that's a big one. Elongated limbs, elongated neck, big eyes. Um, I got that almost to be anime um, proportions of the face. Tiny, tiny chin, large, large eyes, large nose, like in proportion. And then these these swirly flourishes coming off of off of his uh, off off the hair. Call oh, the cats too. Very cool. Oh, that's it. All right, so that's Tim Burton. Let's throw one more in there. And just for fun, I threw Michelangelo into our into the mix. And again, one shot. Give me these ten descriptors, half subject, half um, technical. And you know, he's look. He we know Michelangelo. We, Renaissance. Um, you know, uh, anatomy. Just so detailed anatomy. Uh, this prompt gave me more of his sculptural stuff. So we're going to see some sculptural influence. Um, but it's also lighting, um, and, um, just precision as a craftsman, as an art craftsman. So here is a cheeseburger and boy, you know, what a, you know, it's if, if they had cheeseburgers in his time, I bet this is the one he would paint. Um, that does look delicious. Kind of hungry. Uh, the forest. Look at that. Yeah, I mean, you very much, uh, what is it, uh, religious inspired, you know, this looks dramatic, looks, um, a day of reckoning type of, uh, situation. Absolutely falls in the Renaissance vibe and the Michelangelo vibe. A house. You know, this very cool, very deep, very detailed, beautiful, creepy. There's something weird going on in this cloud. Uh, nothing you can't fix up really nicely, but, uh, that has a mood of a house that I haven't seen before, and I'm not sure what's going on. Um, the detail is high level. The, uh, I would love to run this through it. There's that new AI detailer thing. Um, I haven't got my hands on it yet. Got so many other things going on, but, uh, very interesting. I think this is fantastic. There we go. There's a man, and it went full on um, sculpture or bronze, bronze, bronzing, 
uh, sculpture and, you know, yeah, all right, that's what I would expect. Same thing, we got a motorcycle cast. Very cool, very much, you know, precision Michelangelo effect. Uh, here's our, our octopus back at the sculptural thing. Tree, that's pretty cool. I would say this is it, this is giving us a good Michelangelo color palette, um, but it's interesting because it's a color. It's probably not the color palette that he painted in. This is the color palette of a couple hundred years of of weathering on it. Uh, but that's what we have to work with here. Um, a woman back to the sculptural. Uh, this almost feels clay like, and you know anatomy precise anatomy human anatomy emotion in this sculptural stuff and you know it's he's uh, michelangelo obviously you know and when it comes to clothing and cloth he he can make marble and all this stuff just look weightless which is just amazing um oh and that's it all right that's michelangelo all right thank you for joining me i hope this inspires you to get out there and start messing around with the uh, you know mixing up these two two ai things you know you got your chat gpt here and and your um uh mid journey over there you know there's ways to use these where it's just not throwing together a random stew of of stuff um and and that can work for exploratory stuff but you know there are ways to really dial in and get looks that you want that are controllable and you're not at the mercy of um, the algorithms, you know. You can kind of, like, steer the ship. I like that. That's what we need. That's where we're headed. Okay. Uh, like this video. Subscribe to the channel. I would love that. We're cranking along. Uh, comment below. Let's talk about it. Tell me how you guys mix and match this this stuff. How do you use ChatGPT with, with art generators? Um, I, I think, you know, there's a million different ways to to combine these two things um get on the discord so much cool stuff's going on over there oh also i added some merch it's down there um i can't get the thumbnails to work correctly check out the shop because it's a very i really like the design um you got to look at both sides that's the problem with the the thumbnails anyway uh all right till next week